Today on Internet Marketing Pro, we have a special guest. Her name is Deborah Ball Elderkin, and she is the author of 16 Strategies to Success, the Ultimate Success from the Inside Out. Are you legally minimizing your future tax burden and staying compliant in today's complex tax code? If not, our podcast show sponsor, Michelou Consulting, has over 30 years of experience providing top quality professional services in accounting and tax preparation for a wide variety of clients like you. Whether you need tax return filing, planning, bookkeeping, financial statements, full service payroll, or a corporate or individual tax return filing, I personally endorse you to contact Jeffrey Ressler, CPA, at 561 561- Two three seven five two six four. That number again is five six one two three seven five two six four. And you can visit their website at jrcpa.net. That's jrcpa.net. Tell Jeff Chad Deckard sent you from this podcast to receive his special rate for listening to the show. Thank you very much. Broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean in Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my Internet Marketing Pro podcast show. My shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, and entrepreneurism. Thank you for tuning into my show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now let's cover a quick few announcements before we get started. I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting like I say every week. It definitely makes a difference in motivating me to put these shows out and continually think of the next subject matter that I'd like to explore with you all. I also want to make note that you can go back into my archives and download dozens upon dozens of shows that might be of interest to you if you were just finding this program for the first time. If you like my program, I want you to please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to my show. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support. Now, let's get down to business with our show. Our special guest here today is Deborah Ball Elderkin, is the founder and president at Royal Dugati, and she is also a professional voiceover talent for TV and radio at thevoiceactress.com. She is also a television host and a corporate spokesman at DebraBall.com. Hello, Deborah. How are you doing? I'm great, Chad. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, really excited. Uh, I've known you for uh, several years, and uh, I see that you just recently uh, published a book. And uh, the name of the book is 16 Strate- Strategies to Success. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to uh, interview because I think it's a very interesting topic, especially in today's times where, you know, some people might be down on their luck or, you know, they're not employed and they're trying to figure out how to get back on their feet and get going again and kind of find some positive mental empowerment. And I felt like your book was appropriate to kind of, you know, get into a discussion with you about uh, the reasons why you published it and all that. But before we get into the uh, nuts and bolts of what the uh, content and what the book's all about, I want to know a little bit about uh, where you came from and get a background of your professional career. Mm. Well, that is a very strange, I, I don't even know if I'd call it a career path. I was thinking of that earlier. Would that be a career path? Mine's a little bit more like a career jigsaw puzzle um, because, you know, the interesting thing that I've learned about is though all all of my different directions I've gone were very unrelated professions, I've used the things I've learned in each profession in other professions. Not everything, but, but a lot of it. And it's funny how each new skill that I learned, I didn't realize at the time time that I'd benefit from it later when I needed it down the road. But I'll, I'll give you an idea here. This is this is kind of how my puzzle looked. I was pet sitting, babysitting, and selling greeting cards door to door when I was 15. So <laughs> you asked where it started, so there you go. I started with and, a lemonade stand. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Before that, I sold bumper stickers in class in junior high. Uh, you know, I wanted to make money, bottom line. Our family didn't have a lot of money, and I wanted to figure out how I could earn some money so that I could buy clothes and cool shoes and all that that the other kids were wearing and, you know, wear makeup and get books and all the things I wanted to get because – you know, you know, when your folks are struggling, you can't exactly turn around and say, "Hey, can I can I get some, can I have money for this? Can you buy me these jeans?" I mean, it just didn't happen. So mm-hmm. I wanted all those things, but knew it wasn't available. But I thought, well, maybe I can make money. So 
I got a paper route even when I was 16 and I started also started working in a produce department in a grocery store in Washington State where I was from as soon as I could work I was like 15.9 you know I'm in there filling out my, out my application I said next week I'll be old enough so um, I started working in a produce department and then I went into the restaurant world where I waited tables after that which I think most everyone has put in their time waiting tables at some point in their life and I actually really loved it I it waitressing, I love the interaction with people, and I love that I could control my income by working harder and being better. I'd get good tips, and I felt directly rewarded for my efforts, but I still wanted to know what else was out there, so it sort of piqued my interest. And I'd also wanted to get into modeling and acting um, because I had been in community theater and pageants growing up. So, you know, heck, who doesn't want to be in the limelight? And, and you know, so as a kid, this was sort of this little fantasy dream in my head. Mm -hmm. So... I had professional model photos taken, and I set out to find a talent agent to represent me in Seattle, where I lived, and I was turned down quite a bit. It turns out that they felt I had more of a quote-unquote commercial look and not a fashion look, mm -hmm. and the jobs they were getting required fashion models, not commercial models. So, okay, dream shattered, and <laughs> I got over it, and I moved on, but, you know, it was disappointing. So... But then I went to school for TV production because I thought that would be great with my theater background and my experience behind the scenes and on stage. And I really loved that. It was really appealing to me. The thought of working a TV camera and editing or being a director or script writer, that was super intriguing to me. Until the end of the pro program where I did my internship at Cairo, at Cairo TV Channel 7 in Seattle, and found the newsroom to basically be the most stressful and depressing place I'd ever been. Um, <laughs> there was there, there was no Hollywood glam, um, just the down and dirty news. And basically, I was assigned to track the news feeds coming off the satellites from all over the world on all these monitors and find interesting stories that the station could do a story on. So talk about depressing. Fifteen screens of depressing footage to look at for hours. There were... There were natural disasters, there were homicides, um, political scandals, missing persons, police footage, flooding, crimes committed, and more for hours. And, you know, yuck. I, I was, it was a I it, it was like a, a downer. downer. And yeah. I was like excited to find the once in a blue moon happy footage of like of like the prize sheep story from the state fair or the or the heartstring story of the of the soldier returning home, you know. But those stories were really few and far between. So after two months of that, I was I was out of there. I just I went, This T V world thing is not yeah, for it's me. Kind of the, you know, the thing like if it bleeds it leads, I it's kind of the philosophy, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like this is depressing, I'm having nightmares. Well, so Go, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I took a job as a secretary after that at a refrigeration company. So talk about extreme, you know, boring stuff, but it paid okay. And I have to tell you, though, the thought of that being my new lifetime career was not feeling good for me I, because I knew I had greater potential and I had a lot more to offer, and I just didn't know where I fit or what to do with it. So. After a while, I decided it was time to do something completely different and go a completely different direction because I, you know, just the secretarial job I had just wasn't really doing it for me. So I had always found the very precision detail work of my orthodontist, what he did on my teeth. I always thought that was super fascinating. And, and I, re I thought back to that. I was like, I thought that was so neat to watch my teeth move and how he could move all my crooked teeth and make them straight just using the braces and so what I did is I didn't want to get into a whole thing like I did with the TV production where I go through the whole program and then go to the internship and then find out I don't like it. So I called my orthodontist and said, hey, you know, can I come to the office for a day and go behind the scenes and just spend the whole day with you there and see if I actually really liked it before I decided to go to school for that. So I did it. I fully immersed myself in it. And I ended up liking it even more. I found it super fascinating. So... I signed up for classes at Pima Medical Institute in Seattle to become a dental assistant. And I worked in a dental practice part-time while I went to school. So um, it was really great because I knew so much more than any of the other students from being a working in a dental office at the same time I was going to dental assisting school. So I was, I was actually able to help other students in the class mm -hmm. with what I was learning. I was like way ahead of everybody. Yeah, so that was, was kind of cool. Experience. Yeah. Nice so, advantage. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and I thought I should explore like the dental surgery industry too on my internship because that one was the one that paid the best. And of course, in the back of my mind, I was like, I want to make money. I want to make money. So orthodontics it was. I, I went back to the orthodontic office and I was really happy with my choice. And I went to school and finished. And I I was in the I was successful in the orthodontic profession for 12 years. First in Washington State, and then I moved down to Florida. But one day, everything changed. When in Florida, when a patient we were treating came in, and I was working as an orthodontic at an orthodontic office in Coral Springs, Florida, and this tall, good-looking patient came in. I hadn't met him before, and it ends up that he worked on board cruise ships, and he was also a model in South Florida, which I thought was weird because I didn't even know that that existed in South Florida. But then a few weeks later, another patient, but not the typical model look guy, came in. And I found out his career was in acting and TV commercials. That was his full-time job in South Florida, which shocked me coming from Seattle because, you know, this guy looked like an average dude. And, uh, you know, and I didn't even know that they filmed TV commercials in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, then I learned that at that time, Florida was third busiest production state behind California and New York. So lots of productions were shot here. And it wasn't just the fashion-y stuff, you know, that Seattle was really all about at the time. And I had no idea, and I and I just really couldn't believe it. And, you know, once I was rejected in Seattle as a kid trying to get into modeling, I just sort of had thrown that idea out the window that, you know, hey, that's not really for you. Go find what is for you. It's more but life- here I was. Yeah, it's more lifestyle in Florida. Yeah, it is. And But, you know, here I was learning that I didn't have to be a fashion model to be in TV commercials mm-hmm. that shot in South Florida, that I could I could literally just be me. So I sat and I asked him all these questions. His name is Jerry. And I just quizzed him all the things about the industry. And then he said, well, hey, why don't I take you to meet my agent if you're really that interested and see if he would represent you as your talent agency, as your talent agent. So I did. And, you know, the rest is history because I became a full-time actress, a corporate spokesperson. And, yes, I even modeled. I was in a lot of magazines and on a lot of covers of magazines and did a lot of – I've seen you on a number of commercials myself. Yeah. I know that girl, and I've also heard your voice, and I think you do voiceovers too. I do. I do. And so it all started sort of – the wheels started turning, and I started my own company, DeborahBall.com, which is my maiden name. And I even opened my own voiceover recording studio and then later started a TV production company, Constellation Television Productions, when a client that I was hosting a TV infomercial for in South Africa told me about the troubles that they were having finding American actors and actresses to be in their infomercials in South Africa. And uh, I guess it's very appealing because they found through testing that if you have an American actor or actress in your infomercial, I guess products overseas sell better. So there was this huge demand for them to have all these Americans, you know, in their infomercial, but there were no Americans. Around. They they said that that find to, what they would do to find Americans for their commercials would be they would go to the local college campuses and to the top cooking schools in the area, hoping that they'd see an American. <laughs> and and entice them to deliver dialogue in their commercials, you know, dialogue uh, like, uh, you know, this slicer dicer slices tomatoes right. like never seen before. You know, my life has forever changed and, and all those types of corny lines. And, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it was like finding a needle in a haystack for them. And honestly, they were really only partially successful at it. So it was it was a very big struggle that they had. And as I'm sitting there listening to them you talk about I it. Am. <laughs> I'm like, um, I'm just sitting there in this chair in their office in South Africa, and a little light bulb goes off over my head. I'm thinking, hey, I'm American That's from right. America, <laughs> and I know a lot of Americans <laughs> that would love to be in your infomercials. So. Exactly. You know, and I, I literally worked with hundreds of local talent, and, and just and that's just in South Florida alone, and that would absolutely be, be per, exactly what they're looking for, and I knew it. So, so I said to them somewhat unknowingly and but with full out bravery so that they couldn't really sense it I just said hey I could produce them for you if you just ship me the product and you know I'll do the first one for free as a test so you mm-hmm. can see what I do and if you like it you know I'll just ship you the tapes and if you like it then we can maybe do more in the future and they just sort of stare, sat and looked at each other these two they're two brothers that run they're like 28 year old brothers that run this huge infomercial company in South Africa and they and then they they almost couldn't help it they got they both got like a big grin on their face and they <laughs> I think they thought oh our it's problems are solved <laughs> I know so 
It's like she um, really like, wants to work for us. And I now know. Now we don't have to look anymore. Yeah, it's it was. It was funny because I was literally shaking while I was saying that to them because I had never actually produced anything in my life. I I went to school for it for a little bit and I acted, but I knew I could do it. So this whole big stick thing was my whole turning point with this production company, with starting my production company. And I had I didn't even have a production company. Uh-huh. I mean, I just told them I could do it. So I went home and created one. But anyway, so I'm in that South African airport and I'm getting all these strange looks and then I, it's time for me to take this six foot thing through security and they all stop what they're doing. Every single security person stops to see what it is and to try to read the five by seven placard at the top. And one of the security guys says, I'll just stick it through the x-ray machine. So I did. And then I just took it out and dragged my luggage behind me and got out of there. And I, I remember I went to the women's restroom with it and the ladies in there thought it was like a weapon. Like they were, they literally backed away from me because uh, <laughs> they didn't know what the heck it was. And you're a crazy and I tra- American. I know the crazy American with this thing. She must be a tour guide. But then I went to the priority lounge with it and the gal at the desk literally just looked up and her eyes got really big and she was like, what, what is that? And so I told her and I asked her if I could stash it in a closet because I was tired of carrying it around. And she, thank goodness she had one. She took it and I was finally free of my giant stick for about 30 minutes until boarding time came where, of course, you guessed it, I had to carry my tall stick and stand in line at the gate with everyone staring at me and got on the aircraft with it and begged again for another closet. I literally wanted to hide in the closet at that point because, I, I mean, everybody, to see the expressions and the reactions I was getting from people just out of curiosity and not knowing what it was and not being sure who I was and what I'm doing, it was it was very overwhelming to me to have all that attention, like hundreds and hundreds of people, like just staring at me, mm-hmm. you know? So by the time I got on the airplane, I wanted to go into the closet myself, but luckily we just threw my stick in there and I had my seat, but... You know, then I had to go through France and London and all these different things and get all the way back to Miami Customs and Immigration with my stick. And um, I was like running for the exit of the airport to throw it in my car. And of course, my husband's there and he says, Oh, you know, he's like, Nice stick. What, what does that thing at the top say? What, what is that, a souvenir? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so not a souvenir. But I think that it was some sort of maybe hazing, you know, initiation torture on the part of the uh, the guys in South Africa. I'm sure that as I left their office with a big smile on my face, oh, you know, I'm producing something and a stick in my hand, they were probably just cracking up because they they realized I had to get that all the way back there. But I shot the commercial in Florida. I hired all the local talent and production crew and location scouted, and they loved it. And many more infomercials followed with each project just, you know, getting bigger and bigger. So right. that's sort of how everything developed. Okay. And that, and then you're also, let me, you know, when I looked at what you're currently doing, um, besides just writing, you know, that everything like that leading up to book, um, leading up to the book, you're also a founder of, I believe it's called Royal Delgati. Is, tell us a little bit about Royal Delgati real quick. Well, and I, I think where basically where that came from was, you know, my experience in commercials and infomercials as an actress and a producer really got me thinking more about consumer products that provided solutions to problems because, you know, I was in that industry for 15 years at that point when I started Royal Delgatti. So I had a lot of experience with products that worked, with products that didn't work, and with products that really helped people a lot. And so by that point in my career, I decided to invent my own product which was kind of crazy because I'd never done that before and it's actually a luxury storage jewelry storage solution for women and I'm a big organizational freak so I desperately needed to find a way to store my jewelry but I didn't like anything that was available on the market because there was really no one product that met all of my needs and it was frustrating so I was inspired by my husband's you know giant business risks that he takes on a daily basis in venture capital that's the world he's in and I see the I saw these risks bigger than anything I'd ever experienced and I'm not just talking financially I am talking there's there's so much more involved in that world and and I it, it really made me realize that to have a big payoff you know like the other other people did that were successful that a big risk had to be taken and I'd never taken what I considered to be a big risk before. So mm-hmm. I set out to go for it, you know. And, and my company, my husband was behind me and supported me. And, and now my company uh, is called Royal Delgati. And our jewelry cachet will be on Home Shopping Network and available to consumers in just a few months. So that's what I've been doing. 
That's awesome. That's good Thank for you. you. And like I said, you know, this show is about entrepreneurism and yeah. you've, you've given us a really great story as far as where you've come from and where you're going. And tell us a little bit with all those stories of different things you've done throughout your life leading up to this point where the book is finally finished. What is the inspiration from all that? What is it like you took something a little bit here, a little bit there and then sprinkled it all into like one book and sharing all the knowledge that you've gotten from all the experience you have is tell us a little bit about that well, inspiration well what i learned was that in order to learn the skills that i needed to do a lot of these different things i was doing i had to read a lot of books to learn how to do it even when it came to like starting a new product and packet patenting and licensing and trademarking and just all of you know the marketing and the branding everything so i was reading books i i still right now have six books piled on my nightstand where i'm reading several of them at the same time but that's really how i learn um, a lot of these skills from the top experts that know it inside and out so my inspiration really came from so many of the books that i've read that inspired me to put my voice out there in the big world too with the things that i was good at and that i knew and um I really admire writers when you know the writers that are vulnerable and they also have fun with their writing and they share some of their humor and their wit and like I really I feel like I get to know them by reading their book and I guess I sort of felt like hey I want to get you know get my voice out there and share too and I think what what actually pushed me over the edge to get me writing was public speaking which mm -hmm. I which I do and I wanted to have something that people could take home with them after a presentation to remember some of the keys that we talked about uh, you know I, I speak to audiences about making strategic choices in their business and in their personal life and I was super lucky though because a friend of mine Jason Myers he had asked if I wanted to contribute a chapter to an upcoming book that he was putting together on mindset with some exceptional authors who were also contributing chapters to it and you know I'd never written a book or even publish a chapter you know but but something in me just knew that I had to do it like I was at that point I was ready and it was just what I was looking for and I recognized that that opportunity was right in front of me he was almost making it easy by saying hey yeah. we need to to contribute to this great thing that we're doing can you be a part of it and oh my gosh that's 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 like being handheld into the industry of writing into the writing world absolutely that's how i actually i had an opportunity like that about 16 oh. years ago with a business when we it was very early on in the internet with technology and uh you know we had created actually one of the first mass email marketing systems like an eye contact and oh. uh, I was invited to talk about the, the future of marketing online, and that's kind of how I broke out. I was a top writer with AOL at the time, a content provider, and mm -hmm. uh, um, it just brought unbelievable publicity to me. And so that's really awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you get that opportunity, you got to grab it and, and run with that. Well, and it's funny because it felt like there was like a door just open right in front of me. Uh -huh. And it was like a, a, you know, and I had a choice to either step through it, uh, even though I didn't know what, really what was on the other side because I've never done that, or just stay right where I'm at and always wish and always wonder. And so I just did it. I, you know, because once I tell somebody I'm going to do something, you know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll die before I don't do it. So I, I knew once I committed to him that it was going to really help me to go toward what I wanted to do anyway. So I'm yeah. so great. You got to feel yeah. that fear at the same time, which most people right. are scared once they kind of, you know, some people think about, oh, I want to be in business for myself. I want to work for myself. And they, they think of it kind of in a, I've talked to so many people about this over the year in sort of a, I guess a linear fashion, kind of sure. like a regular job, but it's not like a regular job whatsoever. You have your ups, no, you have no. your downs. Like you said, sometimes you've got to take tremendous risk. I know, mm -hmm. you know, being an entrepreneur myself all my life, the greatest payoffs came with the greatest risks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I guess, you know, like my mom would say, you better take the biggest risks now while you're young so it doesn't impact your life as much later on. So as you get older, you're not going to want to get out of your comfort zone and take those big of risks unless obviously right. you're still that crazy you know and re <laughs> yeah, rebellious like you are when you're younger which you know sure. i think we're a little bit more calculated with our age you know kind of like mm -hmm. a, a fine wine you just kind of get better with making decisions hopefully as uh, we get older but you know mm -hmm. going back to the book you know you talk about 16 strategies to success could you share you know what those 16 strategies are 
Sure. Um, well, I, I won't go through all 16 of them, right. but I can give, us give you an overview. Bit. Sure. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, well, some of the key points that myself and the other authors really hope the readers will come away with after reading 16 Strategies to Success um, include learning about the mindset for business. And, of course, it isn't just for business, but when we're talking directly about business, we can certainly apply it to business for sure with great success. Also, you know, how to transform debt into abundance, which is also a huge very important thing for entrepreneurs and for everyone, um, finding happiness and peace of mind and unleashing prosperity into their lives. And we hope they'll also be inspired by one of the author's weight loss journeys, which is her weight loss story is just amazing. Um, and we hope to help them connect with their inner power and they'll learn about their fast track to high performance and five easy steps to finishing what they start. And, and there's really so much more in there. So there's some great secrets that are revealed in this book that were really instrumental to these authors' rise to fame and fortune. And I think that 16 Strategies to Success is a great book. And I hope that, I hope that your listeners do too because I, I keep reading it over and over and I'm, I'm finding new things in it every time. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. So I haven't actually gotten a chance to um, read it myself because you just came out with it not yeah. too long ago. Like but hopefully week. maybe I'll get a chance to take a peek in it. And it, it mm-hmm. sounds from sounds to me from what you're explaining that it's you, you kind of write a, a number of things, but it's kind of maybe somewhat of a compilation of variety of different people's um, mm-hmm. stories. And I think that's kind of cool that not only can you share your own perspective, but some other really great stories of other people's perspectives, maybe on a particular strategy, you know, one point of those 16 or that you mentioned, Mm -hmm. is that kind of how it lays out? Yeah, and each of us were assigned a chapter, so we actually have our own little um, forum, I guess, to to, within the book that's... And, and and you learn about each of the authors because their authors each have their bio in there so you can hear what their background is, what their stories, what their successes are. And it's, um, you know, nobody has all the answers. And with everything I've done in, in my business, I have so much still to learn and I have so much growing left to do. Mm-hmm. And I can learn so much from people that have come before me, that have made mistakes, that have had successes. And I sort of like want to absorb that information and just and learn it. And, and that's why I think books like these and, and there's uh, – other books on the market that I've really that have helped me so much to just uh, open open my mind mo- open my eyes broaden my perspective um, think of things from a different angle and and really help guide me because you know what when you're an entrepreneur you're on your own and mm-hmm. you really are <laughs> so if you can uh, if you can take the guidance and learn from people's um, things that have worked for them and 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 what what's made them successful, then, uh, you know what, that's a great, that's a, such a powerful tool. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, uh, now that you've finished the book and you've got a, you know, the, it's getting out there now, um, on Amazon and some other book, um, outlets, uh, and you also have this, the, the other business with the jewelry box, the, uh-huh. the, um, Royal, Royal Delgatti. Delgatti. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what are your future plans? You know, with the combination of the book and the in the jewelry business or jewelry box business. I'm sorry. Um. Well, I think you know I've always been so multitasking. It's not even funny. So I really love watching the development of of my product, and actually, it's going going to be available. You know, in in like mid June. So it's almost here, and it's been almost three and a half years that that I've been doing it, and uh, oh, wow. it's been a really yeah, it's been a really long road. So how exciting that we're right, we're right at the edge of, and we've got such a demand for it already. We, I've got five different stores that want to sell it, and I've got consumers already putting in orders and already putting me, you know, they want to be on lists, and and they're like waiting for it. So that's such that's so rewarding. Um, but I'm also working on, you know, at the same time, I I like we, you know, at night when the day's done, I still, you know, I tinker around with with the writing, and I really enjoy it. So right now I'm working on a book about. About networking and how because I'm such a business person I love anything to do with business I read all the business magazines and I love success magazine and entrepreneur and I read all the books and I, I just can't get enough of it so I've learned a lot about networking from my personal experiences and what's worked for me to really capture the right people. Um, so I'm writing a book about networking and how to find and capture your best clients and customers um, because networking is something I've always enjoyed, but there's definitely a right way to do it and there's certainly a wrong way to do it. And I've had some pretty good success. Like that's how I met you, <laughs> you know? Exactly. 
Yeah, and exactly. I, I just like to share some of this information with others so that they can do it too because it, it's not rocket science, but it sure is nice to to read maybe about what someone else did that worked for them and think about it when you're thinking of, well, how can I find that, that perfect customer for me? How can I find that client that's going to book me over and over and over? Like the people that I really want to reach, how do I get to them and, and how do I keep a build a relationship with them how do i keep a relationship with them and and you know continue to grow a business and i that that sort of information is just fascinating to me absolutely i always i said this years ago why i started um like i mentioned earlier in the program the email marketing you know engine like eye contact it was called info generator Mm -hmm. um, the, and that was part of the thing that we taught people was, hey, you know, for now you can actually capture people's names and have them sign their address and their email address and then put it into a computer and send them follow up email messages or coupons mm -hmm. or invitations to an event or whatever it is. And it allows you to be able to, you know, automate it or um, keep up with these people like you'd never been able to do before. And, and that mm -hmm. is, it is, a, it is a talent. And what I liked usually what I, when I was kind of coming up the ranks, not only did I learn things that were unique to myself, but I also found like people like you, or I was able to draw from their knowledge, little, I'd say little golden nuggets of yeah. information that sometimes could completely change the whole paradigm. I mean, I mm -hmm. knew a lot, but that one little thing sometimes could change your life dramatically. And I've had that happen in several occasions and that's what's kind of leading into your new book, you know, networking, yeah. that yeah. you never know who you're going to meet. And when you do meet someone, you kind of really only get, you know, that first Once, impression, yeah. you know, that's to, so true. to make the biggest impact. And I can't tell you, even in your own explanation of your life coming up, that, you know, those it's those people in that moment mm -hmm. where you meet people that counts, that, that can totally change the course and direction of your life. For sure. Well, Absolutely. Deborah, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come on to the show and uh, give us uh, a rundown of uh, all the exciting things that you're up to and doing in your new book, which the new book is called 16 Strategies to Success. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's written by Deborah El Elderkin. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us, uh, Deborah, where we can uh, or the audience can uh, pick up your book, which, by the way, I'm going to provide a link in the description of either the video or the audio of this program. So if you want to refer down to sure. the description, everyone, click that link. You'll It'll take you directly to um, Deborah's uh, place where you can get the book. But obviously, yeah. it's on Amazon. Is there anywhere else you can pick it up? Well, it's also on Kindle, uh, which I guess is all part of Amazon anyway. But mm -hmm. it's just another method where you can enjoy it. Um, and then uh, my website, DebraElderkin.com, will also have links to it. But I, I really think the best way is probably just to go to Amazon and um, pick it up there. Okay, yeah, I've got that link, and I've got your link to your site, so I'll put both of those in the descriptions, and uh, I guess that's about okay. it, and I really appreciate you coming on here today. And uh, thanks Chad, thank you so much. Hey, Take care. Welcome. If you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do by visiting my website, chaddecker.com, or if you have an iTunes or Stitcher Smart Radio, take it with you wherever you go on your mobile device. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to my show. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support, and you are part of what makes this show a success. Well, that's about it for this show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. This is Chad Deckard signing off. Goodbye for now.